Welcome to the orchard, ladies and lords. Planted trees up in here, and they really did not do well. We're gonna um, relocate, I think. This I'm just gonna keep open. This, we're, instead of the orchard, we're gonna start calling this the holler. But I wanted to show you the what the bush hog has done. Yes, yeah, so I started cutting in here, and all around here, started taking out a lot of these like aggressive invasive things like like the spice bush here so the grass used to end about here and i opened it up all the way to the wood line so we have a mountain on our right here that goes up and up and up and if you go to the very top there's a cemetery and it comes down and then it banks and goes up the next mountain that's what a holler is so we're in the holler or the valley if you want to call it and uh, I've been opening up all this land here. And this is what I want for this area. I just want a nice open field. Well, not open field, just, you know, I'm leaving all these trees and everything. And I got some poplars growing there. I, you know, I'd like to encourage some young poplars because I'm going to be taking a bunch of the mature ones for the house build. Like this guy here is a poplar. Okay, but I got it all the way up to the wood line here. And look how much I have increased this, this field, this area. So I went from here all the way into here with that bush hog. There's Maddie. Hi, Maddie. You found me. Here I am, honey. What have you been up to? Huh? Did you find anything good? Look what I got guys another score look at this thing so this is I don't know what it is maybe it was an old trailer or something um, all I know is that there's two two I beams here it looks like it's uh, eighth inch I beams or something like that they're, they're light duty but still um, the main thing is these are about 16 plus I, you know I'd say maybe 20 16 20 feet long and there's two of them ricky picked this thing up i couldn't believe it this was uh just in the woods lost forgotten about i went i got it i trade so uh, I, I bartered a little bit of service with the uh, new bush hog did some bush hogging for somebody and they gave me this awesome well old frame to something so here's the intentions with it now, here comes Autumn in her pretty dress. Hey, Autumn. Hi. All right. Here's the intentions with it. What we're going to do is utilize... When I saw this thing, I was like, I need these I-beams. Okay? I'm going to build, and I didn't share this with you guys, but I'm going to build a structure over the mill. I talked about the pad last time. And I want to build something that go like a little lean-to structure with some tin roof over top of it. And that's what these I-beams are gonna be. I'm gonna give Ricky a break here. Ricky did good for the day. Um, get him out of the way. And I might as well, since it's home now, I'll go get the skid steer, pick this thing up, and uh, go put it up by the mill for now. All right, we got our youngest here. We got Autumn learning the tractor. How old are you, Autumn? Eight. Eight, let me think. Yeah, that's legal age, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Autumn, we're going to go backwards, we're going to turn this way, we're going to head down the driveway, okay? All right, go ahead, you go that way, here we go. 
do a quick little bucket change. Autumn did good coming oh, down the driveway. I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do that. We're gonna take off our auxiliary. Let's do, let's see. Take that off and take that off. camera lady you did good Clara Thank you. good job all right we got our frame up here we're gonna utilize that rail and that rail and we'll have a span so here's the thing guys um, we got we got our rails there uh, behind the the frame here we got you know those 25 feet long I grabbed these because what I want to do is build a uh, I, I guess a little lean-to structure which would be a pole on the left a pole on the right and there'd be the I-beam across the entire thing and it would have metal roofing sloped that way off that way and um, we could have as many poles as we need to support the back but the front I want it to be open so we could get a humongous log like a 23 foot log and put it right on the mill. Um, I didn't want to have to maneuver around a pole that's like right in the middle so we have something we could weld together to extend it to be at least 25 feet long now so this is this is a huge score this probably saved me gosh i'll just throw a number of like 500 bucks out there so good deal good find and this will become part of the project good job clara thanks for your help
was to bring it out into the trail so we can cut the length we need and then maybe a second cut, although I don't know if we're going to get a second cut. So I said to Meg, let's make our concrete forms. Let's level out the area. Let's get it all level. Let's compact the dirt, which means tracking over with the machine. And then we will make some forms to pour our pad. I said, do you want to go get a sheet of OSB? It'd be really easy to work with to make the forms. And she looked at me with kind of a, are you kidding me look? How dare you say that? Like, are you serious? We don't buy wood. Yeah. I mean, I was going to take apart the sawmill, but Meg's like, no, we're going to use our sawmill, then take it apart after we have the boards we need to make a form for the sawmill. Anyway, long story. Uh, we're going to make some boards real quick. following along Willie hasn't had I shouldn't say no problems there's been one time Willie has shut down on us since we moved that fuel line we did not install the vacuum pump and it, it's kind of ironic because John ordered the vacuum pump and Amazon randomly didn't deliver it and canceled the order which was really strange, but it was maybe meant to be because it doesn't seem like we need to change the pump. It seems to be okay. The I guess it was that we were having the fuel line go over the hot part. I'm sorry, I don't know all the terms, but it was going over the top and that was creating a vapor lock or heat lock or some, something like that. You, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. And now Willie's doing pretty good and that's good for times like this and before we had Willie this kind of scenario John's in a machine and I would be walking back and forth up and down all a lot of walking and it's especially not fun in the mud so I'm glad to have a mobile to be able to get around now and the dogs can follow me so that's the update on Willie wanted to address a couple comments guys um and we've been we've been a little light on the replies i apologize about that we're just it's we've been busy um we want to keep these videos coming but if you noticed i had the tracks pretty much like right up to here look where the angle iron is right there okay so when i said that we wanted a two foot pad after the mill and everybody's like oh no make it bigger you could always like have some extra walking space now, a couple of you recommended some extra width coming out this way. Um, I believe that's unnecessary. Meg does also, but aside from that, these rails, okay, they're 28 inches, so two foot four. And that's about how close I can get with a log to put it on the mill. I don't want to take this, this machine weighs 8,000 pounds. I don't want to get the tracks anywhere near that concrete. Mm -hmm. um, put putting weight on it and crack the slab. I, I don't want to do that. So the two feet That's kind of what I'm thinking would get us to here. Maybe 28 Actually, I I thought if I could get a little bit closer. It would have been better. So yeah, I I would stick with our original plan 24. Yeah 24 would be right here and that gives the operator Yeah, we're right at the handle. That means the slab would be I mean, you're just, you're walking right here. That's it. I think it's a good plan, Meg. Let's go with that. That, I just wanted to explain to everybody why we're going to go a little shorter. You have to approach it with the machine. You don't want that machine on the slab either. I don't want to pour an yeah. eight inch thick slab so I could get my machine up on top of it. It's just unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So if anything, I'd want some extra room down here on this end so I could kind of like do this. Yeah. So we'll have a little bit of length added to it have the mill sit on it and 24 inches out that's the plan meg you agree i agree
little delay here, guys. I pulled the rope on the mill, which, Meg, when was the last time we used this thing? It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been, it's been a day. Yeah. And we got a little, little pull cord incident. So we were running it. Meg's like, well, we just got to process this log and not turn the mill off. <laughs> and, uh, well, sometimes when you increase the uh, throttle, it, it'll stall if you give it, you know, too much, I guess, fuel at once. It'll flood the carb. So it stalled. And now we can't start it. All right, let's get this thing off. I need a drink of water anyway, and we'll get this, uh, this pull cord back on there. Okay, John. <clears throat> I think all I gotta do is tie a knot here and thread it through. We'll see. Hopefully it's that easy. I guess we'll, uh, do you think it's gonna be that easy? I think we're gonna replace this, this rope anyway. Here we are, 45 minutes later. Hey, we had watermelon. <laughs> of course it wasn't an easy task. Sure it was. Springs went flying, ropes went twisting. It was not fun. Whoa. Oh yeah, it's just fun. Not to lose this thing now. There we go. Oh yeah. I think the mill needs a name. No, it doesn't. Milton. Milton. No, I like the clue um, theme. Colonel Mustard? The girls have been really into the movie Clue lately, because it was one of my favorites when I was little. It's not really a kid movie, but that's how we roll. Uh, we named the red truck Miss Scarlet. <laughs> I think, I think, I think this could be Colonel Mustard. Well, shouldn't it be yellow then? <laughs> Should this be Miss Peacock? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Peacock. <laughs> Who are the other ones? Miss White? Miss White? Does, isn't Miss White the one that wears all the black? Yes. Who else is there? The maid? Yeah, she's boring. Colonel Mustard. Mr. Body. Mr. Body. <laughs> Alright. I like Colonel Mustard. Yeah. Maybe, it, you know what? No, think of this, John. The new rails are starting to rust. And they, Colonel Rustard? They're <laughs> Colonel Rustard. <laughs> We're getting slap happy now. A little bit. It's the sun. All right. All right, let's get back to it. All we right. have one board <laughs> two hours later. Come on, Mac. House will be done in no time. Yeah, the house is going to be done in like, you know, it'll take like three months. Our niece, every time she calls, she says, Uncle John! Are you Uncle done with your house? Uncle John! A good looking woman with a mighty big chain. I always, whenever I carry this chain, yeah. I feel like the ghost of Christmas past. Oh goodness, Meg. All right, we are disassembling the mill, ladies and gentlemen. That made its final cuts with this deck. Um, Meg is chaining up the mill, so she's responsible if something happens. <laughs> um, you so told me where to chain it up. The bandsaw the, with the rollers and everything, it's just sitting there with gravity. So all we have to do is chain it up, grab it with this big guy, and then just carefully move it. We have some scrap here from that log. We used one log and we got all these boards. This is gonna be about the size of our um, sheathing too. I just cut it at the one inch mark. I mean, it gives you about a three quarter inch board, but not bad. I really didn't care about characteristics, knots, whatever. We did. These are just these are just boards that we're going to use for our forms for the concrete pour. So, roughly 30 feet long by 40 something inches wide, like just under four feet. So, all right, here's one last look, guys, of this area before we take it all apart. 
let's get this stuff out of the way, Meg, and then we'll start cleaning up and smoothing things out and making the dirt really compact for our pour. We know we can move them. Yeah. Good. You want that side? It's not hot. That was probably not hot. Then. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's hot. It's burning my fingers. Ah. Good. Ow. John's switching out the grapple. I'm actually putting them together so they're easier to reinstall when I want to. Now if you'll remember back in episode, I'm not sure which episode, I'll put it in writing. John made this clamp. Yeah, it's totally a knockoff. You guys have seen these other clamps, but I didn't feel like spending 85 bucks on the other one. This one that one works great. So I linked these together. It's gonna sit out here outside. It'll get cold tonight, it'll heat up tomorrow, and that's that helps the flow of the oil while the oil tries to um, sep not separate, while the oil tries to expand when it gets warm and contract when it gets cold. That'll allow an open circuit for it to move around. So, this thing here, this is my John clamp, my John coupler. It's just a pipe clamp, and I um, just kind of grinded some eighth inch steel in, in those shapes and uh, you can move these things around so it's pretty versatile. Uh, it, it takes a lot of pressure to click those together. Um, so I'm gonna make a new one of these but this this fork here and here is, I'm gonna use a thicker steel. I'm gonna use the old cutting edge from my bucket for that and I'll reinforce it with triangles but the other thing I wanted to do was make this process easier because when it starts getting tight you're like Argh! like this. I wanted to basically Maybe I'll weld a, a ratchet here instead of a manual turn. Mm -hmm. You could just kind of use the, the ratcheting action and you should give yourself some leverage that way. Yeah. But this I just throw in here and it just sits around and hasn't let me down. Allows me to do the job by myself. John, you did good. Thanks. Look at this flat spot you made. Mostly. Now we'll get a level and check what we need to do. Finding all sorts of goodies. All right, let's see where we're at. Hey, give it to me. All right, here you go. All right. Well, hot dog. That looks pretty good. That looks like a big slab now, doesn't it? I wanted this in the back tapered a little bit toward the hillside there. There's a hill 
and a creek runs from those mountains over there. That's what our bridge in the front is all about. I and think we gets, gotta build up a little bit back here, or unless you wanna go that way a bit. It gets pretty muddy up here, so. You know, you say that, but all this grass and stuff is gonna help out too. It we will. Didn't have that. It will. Last time we were milling in the winter. Very so. true. So all that stuff was just slipping off that mountain yep. and coming down, terrorizing me. Okay, this feels pretty good. I mean, you track over with that machine, goodness gracious. Hard as a it, rock. It feels pretty good. We basically just gotta get it in the ballpark and then we'll level off the, the slats. All right. And, well, I feel like I can do a little bit better with all this. Let me hop back in now that I'm seeing it. But let's go get a level, at least the string level. We'll put it like right. two inches above this end, two inches above that end, and just draw it tight and see where it is. Okay. It's going to be high let's over there. I mean, should I have made it? <laughs> Maddie. Thanks, Maddie. Move, honey. Meg. You done? Yep. What is happening here? Looks like we got a bump in the middle. All right, now, who is going to be super fast and run to check it? Autumn. Give Come me here. Autumn, hold this stick. Or should we make Autumn tell us if it's level or not? Come here, Autumn. Hold this stick. Don't shake it, wiggle it, or do anything. Just, just hold it right there. Don't let it move. Got it? Got it. See, the thing is, is that it's touching, touching the, this, the line is touching the dirt. Yeah, that's the problem. Could we slide it up like another two inches? Yeah. All right. Okay. Um. That's quite a difference. Yeah. We're off by two inches. All right. We gotta cut some area where your boots are. Okay. Yeah. Right. Then we'll measure again. All right. Someone's got to go tighter, man. Tying something to your roof rack in your car, this is what you want to do. You want to make a little loop. Just make a loop knot here. Okay. And then you're going to use that in a second. What you want to do is come around like your anchor, like where you're trying to tie everything to. Where's the level? Right here. All right. Can you put that level on there? All right. There we go. Now, it's good if you get a buddy to help you with this, but... Hold this really tight, go through that loop while, while holding your string tight. And what you're gonna do is now apply this way. And all you, all, the only thing left to do is just make a knot, not around here, but right here. And that gives you a really nice taut line. You could kind of crank down on that. It's actually, uh, I'm sure it's some kind of like mechanical advantage type thing too because it, it's moving like pulleys do. All right, a little overhand knot there. Do another, just do a double knot. It's usually enough. That's a hitch, I think. Hitch knot. I'm not positive, but I use that in boating. There we go. All right. See, so you... You make your little loop, which is right here. You go around and then you connect it to that loop. Pull it tight. You're gonna be able to pull it tight twice as strong because it's like a simple two to one setup right there. And then you got a nice taut line here. 
and uh, we're looking pretty level. All right, we got a level pad, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. And it's kind of like the perfect moisture content. This is super sandy and clay and all that stuff. Meg is driving Rambo like a baby. Throttle up! It's happening again, guys. She's got the smooth bucket. I told her just, see, we want this level nice and flat the way it is here. But that side, I want to taper it off because there is a little creek down there when it rains in the winter. So I just have Meg kind of like beveling it off here. Um, this is really, really nice material to work in. All this sandstone and, and clay. It's kind of refreshing to work in something like this after all of the rock work and trailblazing that I've been doing lately. So having no rocks in the soil and just having all this like big sandbox, I feel like a little kid playing. And I think Meg feels that way too. All right, she's just doing a little back dragging. I'm not even gonna interfere. I just wanna see what she does. Feel my toys. Don't go that way too much. Try to stay over here in your sandbox. remnants of the old cinder blocks. All right, so we're a bit more this way than we want it to be, but I was thinking about it with Meg. We have a little bit of, so the rails would go here, the slab would go here, then we're gonna have a lean-to structure, which comes up and goes over the mill according to how much uh, head space we need. But then I thought it would be a good idea to have a little bit of area back here where we could actually plant some grass so it would be behind the structure. Because we'll have a little pole barn here, and we'll have some, you know, we'll, we'll probably block it off with a wooden fence on the back. Wow, that stuff is just so elastic. Wow. Is that? Anyway, there'll be a back on this side. And then to maintain some of that space, just to give yourself a buffer before the uh, weeds back here. Thought we could give ourselves an extra three or four feet. Yep. You know this blade we've made our entire shed with? Really? You never changed the blade? Well, I bought it new. I, you know, I cut a few boards and then I, I put this, I think it's an Irwin blade. No label on this side. It's an Irwin, but it's like a 60 something tooth, but. It's pretty versatile. It's not a rough cut, but it's not a fine cut, somewhere in between. Here's the plan for the slab, guys. We are pouring a slab directly on grade. We're gonna put some stone down first, just for some separation between the slab and the soil for moisture absorption reasons. But the slab will be poured four inches thick. We're gonna have it the 32 inches for the mill, another 24 inches for the walkway for the operator, and then on the back, where you would start your cut as the operator, we're giving ourselves an additional two feet that way. And then on the end, we're having one extra foot past the, I guess the last part, the end of the rail. Now the rails, we were thinking of casting in place um, these metal I-beam type things that the rails would fasten to. Meg and I talked extensively last night over a nice fire and we decided that we're going to instead put block wall. 
So we're gonna have two layers or two levels, two rows, I'm sorry, of block walls. So just your common cinder block, eight inches tall each. So we'll have 16 inches up and we will then, so we'll pour the slab, we'll put the block walls, we'll grout it all together, we will fill them and then um, bolt the rails directly to that block wall. And we figure that would give us an, a second chance to get the level absolutely perfect. We could, after the fact, shim where we need to, but we should be able to get it perfectly level yeah. and there's going to not be any twisting, no wobbling, nothing like that. And why else did we want to do a block wall? Uh, the other reason, because we're not masons and we are going to be doing a lot of block wall for the house. So this is all kind of like practice for the house. We're also enforcing the concrete pad and the block wall, of course, with number four rebar. Yeah, we want and, to practice. And I might even add some, uh, what do you call it, some fiber to the concrete. So that's the plan, should be plenty strong and should do the job what we're needing it to do. Now we're cutting the sides. We need 28 feet, so my mill cuts nine foot six. We just uh, cut these down to nine foot four. So if you Your do the math- old mill cuts nine foot You do the six. math nine foot four times three, it gives you a perfect 28. Now we just need the end pieces, and we're gonna use that thicker board. That was the last cut on the mill from that tree that we did yesterday. All right. But we got all this lumber all these one by fours out of a single log, which wasn't even that big. It was, uh, I think like an 11 inch log. So pretty good yield. Yeah. Okay. So. Hey, Manny? Okay. Can you get a shot of her? Maddie. She never wants to be left out guys. Maddie. Carmen's usually a leaf, but... Yeah, we can't have that, guys. See? No! That's one end to the other. So that's how... You gotta make sure the mill is level. In all directions. Alright, we have our pad leveled as much as we're gonna level it. And I have to say, you're very lucky to not be here. That pile smells so bad. Blech. And the fact that the sun is warming it up, just ugh. All right, John's got Willie with our wood that we're gonna use for the frame. John made us plane it because he's a perfectionist and I love him for that, but sometimes it's exhausting, but now they're all the same thickness, so we'll have a nice even pad. Right, John? Yeah. All right. John does not cut corners, ever. It's a good quality, but it's exhausting. Uh -huh. All right, let's do this. My dad had a motto. And he said, do the job, what was it saying? Do the job right the first time. Instead of explaining. wasting time explaining why you didn't. Yeah. It's better or to do, he it's said better it's easier. Do, it's easier to do the job right the first time than ex to explain why you didn't do it right. That's or something like that, right? That's the gist of it, yeah. Yeah, basically, you don't wanna have to explain why you did something wrong why you cut a corner. You don't want to have to explain why you cut a corner. God, it smells over there. I was just telling our viewers how much it smells. Yeah. There it is. Okay. Um, how old is it? 
T25s, best screws ever made. They're decking screws. Those specific yellow ones are the best ones ever made or just the T25? I don't know, these, I like them. I bought a hundred pounds of them or... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't buy that many. <laughs> oh, now I gotta fight with this thing. Oh, right there. Now that's a screw. Okay, this, this is a dumb screw. Look at that. Look at that! So stinky. It's really gnarly. How would you describe this smell to our viewers, John? Ultra moist. <laughs> no, it... It smells like rotting dirt. <sighs> Baked in sun. I mean... Sun baked rot dirt it, it smells, dirt rot. It smells like a compost pile. That's what it smells like. No, compost doesn't really have like a Yeah, after it's done cooking. But while it's cooking. Uh-uh. Nice. John's nice screws. Gonna be our pad. So we're the inside. Thank you. We gotta move like a foot and a half, I think. Just be careful. Alright. About there. We'll run lines and get everything nice and straight. New day. Not as smelly today. Right, John? Drying up. How are we looking? Wow, take a look. We are looking pretty level. I mean, we're in the ballpark. We just got to take the stakes and bump up. We got to figure out where the true high spot is and build off of that. Because the high yeah. spot, you can't get it lower. So you got to go off the high spot and then bring the low ones up until you're perfectly all the way. Yeah, M my question though, mm -hmm. are we level this way? No. No. All right. It seems like we need some dirt here. Yeah, I feel that way too. That's what it looks like. Yeah. So we're gonna move it and do that with uh, Rambo? I think and... so. Because, I mean, we have an opportunity here to like get this almost perfect with nothing in our way. So yeah, let's just get some dirt. We'll put it on this third and then we'll track over it, we'll check. I think we only need like an inch and a half. Okay. Let me get grab half. There you go. That's good.
Good job. That looks good. Yeah, it does. It looks it looks pretty level. Huh. That looks great. We ended up having to regrade the whole pad. Problem is it was a little bit off and then instead of adding material we we took away. And when we did that we made a hole and we didn't want to make the pad in a hole so we had to re regrade everything so john pretty much took everything from here and put it over here see the problem with trying to level dirt with a machine is that you're at the mercy of whatever level your track or tires are on. And it's hard to understand because when, when you look at it, you're like, oh, just make the bucket level. But if your tracks aren't level, as your tracks move, your bucket, which started level, ends up not level. And it makes it very difficult and a lot more difficult than it looks if you're doing it by hand and you have control over how the shovel stays level when you're in a machine your bucket is going to go with whatever level your tractor or I'm sorry your tracks are on it's hard to explain but it's more difficult than you would imagine I think we're much better now, John. We're not in a hole anymore. Looks good. This is a hole now, but that's okay. That's gonna be the back of the building, like oh, sawdust yeah. area. We'll fill this with sawdust. <laughs> We are looking really good, John. Thank you. Mighty fine. It's laying pretty nice. Are you bending it into straight? Yeah. yeah. You want me to hold it? See what you're, yeah, give me a tap right at that seam there. Or, or do that, sure. Um, no. I'm gonna leave the string loose. I'll get it. Have you been missing this, John? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I found the tops of the the water. However, I was saying to John the other day, Meg's pro tip: you don't put the cover on, it fills with rain. You always have water in there. Never run out. All right, that's my temporary one. This is the 
tricky part, Autumn. Let's get it out of high gear. All right, we're gonna throttle. No more bunnies. We're gonna throttle down. No more bunnies. All right, can you? Yeah, try to stay on the road. She's a little off the road, but she's getting there. That a girl. Just talking to Phyllis. Yeah. The other day. Yeah. And she goes, and Bobby and I get out there with the chain. He'd always be sitting on the tractor and I'd be chaining up the trees. I was the one doing all the hard work. That sounds familiar. I told her that. Tighten it up, choke it. I'm trying. I'll do it. Hold on. I got it, I got it. I don't want you complaining that you're getting too much chain work. <laughs> me to take it okay stop Aww. these screws I swear it's like someone's nephew made them on this day off <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> nope no nope. oh no oh my lord it's stuck isn't it Don't get hurt. Just, we're not using these. These can just suck it. Don't throw them. No, I'm not gonna throw them. Okay. No, they're just, they're going bye-bye. You're gonna go to another place. Could've handed me one first. <laughs> it was for dramatic effect, John. Oh, gotcha. Sorry to miss that.